Would you paint a complicated scene like this? This is Brixham Harbour in the UK. And when you look at it, first of all, you might think, crikey, what, what on earth is going on here with all of the different boats mingling with each other, the rigging, the, the details of the background as well, the reflections, what's going on in the foreground. Quite a complicated scene, but I think sometimes a complicated scene could improve your watercolour skills. It can push you a little bit further and maybe even force you to be a little bit loose. When you've got so many details to think about that you're, you're bombarded with, you then your, your, your strategy then is to, is to try and simplify all of that complication, all of those little details. So hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, watercolour painter and demonstrator on YouTube, um, creating a number of watercolour tutorials. Yes, yeah, so this is Brixham Harbour and a sunny scene, obviously low harbour. What attracted me to the scene? I think it's the light hitting these two, well, this boat here and the right-hand boat. And I think they're quite, I mean, the composition, just looking at those two objects, just looking at those two shapes, these bright shapes, that's the start of a composition. We've got here, little Harry, <laughs> um, looks like an older boat than Jaw Dancer, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, Jaw Dancer. Um, but little, little and large um, in Brixham Harbour. And the, the light hitting the side of that boat, some nice shadows going up the side of that boat, and then Jaw, oops, I'll zoom back out, Jaw Dancer, the light hitting that right-hand half, nice, nice sort of curvy, curvy, interesting shadow from that fender, that vertical fender, that nice little sort of curvy shadow there. Yeah, so that's, that's the first thing. But down to simplification. Um, let, let me point out some other complicated things. These buildings on the left-hand side, on the top of the, uh, behind the harbour wall. This is where the town starts to seize over the right, seize over that way. And then town goes around, around to my left and around behind me as well all of those complicated rooftops windows bottom of the buildings zoom even further people oh, it's, it's just too much detail and all these boats there look at this there must be about eight ten boats in there all different shapes and sizes all immediately on the left here is I think it's a replica of, I might be wrong here, the Golden Hind or something like that, some old 15th century galleon that's um, uh, a really interesting place to um, go and visit and, and see how the, uh, the seafarers uh, managed to, to do their voyages <laughs> so many centuries ago. But I'm going to ignore that. I imagine that is disappeared. It doesn't exist. Let me zoom back out again. So I'm going to be concentrating on this scene here. Not so sure about this boat on the left, but certainly these two and the foreground. All of this sort of, well, it's not mud. It's sort of like shingles and sh um, little tiny pebbles. But the water... So I guess the tide is going out and it's just it's so wet and damp here, but we can see, see the reflections of the boat there. You know, this boat, there's the reflection there and the main one here, that main half there. So we've got, the, we've got that shape there. We've got that shape there. I think that's quite a nice composition to start with. Just, just, work, just working on those two shapes. And then building around that, but trying to trying to keep things simple. Um, next, background. 
over there on the right, over to the uh, sea. Uh, I, I guess there's a larger marina or something over there. Again, lots of complicated shapes. A few horizontal, light, lighter shapes and a few thin vertical shapes with the mass. Yeah, so that, that's the scene I'm going to try, try and do. Uh, let's see how we get on. Paper I'm using for this demo is that's the same as I normally use, Saunders Waterford, 300 grams, and it's 15 inches by 11 inches. I'm feeling the cold, so I've got my fleece on. <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, but doing the outline drawing, first step, getting in the main shapes. And I don't spend a lot of time doing the outline drawing. I've got a 2B pencil here, mechanical pencil, just drawing the main shapes. So concentrating on those two main objects I mentioned. So this is the right hand boat. There's the right hand side of the boat, the bottom of the boat, the keel, sorry, the, um, the, the uh, bow of the boat, and then down the left hand side, The left hand side is a little bit short or less wide than the right hand side. So we can see more of the right than the left. There's a fender on the right hand side, which is just disappearing behind the boat. I'm moving it a little bit further forward. So I've got a couple of fenders. There's a little fin. <laughs> I have to excuse the nautical terms. I'm hopeless at nautical terms, but there's there's some kind of um, two. There's a couple of fins that are near the front of the the boat that are, I guess, supporting it in some way. There's the other one. Water's edge, roughly there. And then I need to think about the reflection of this boat. So I tend to, when I do this, I tend to stand back a little bit just to help me get the, almost like the mirror image of that object and the reflection. So I'm standing back just a little bit. Now, second boat, smaller boat on the left, little Harry, and that bright white shape. I think this is this is a simpler boat to do because we're just looking at the side of it and it's a case of getting the top of the boat right and the bottom of the boat right and just making it look like it's pointing in the right direction. Going beyond Little Harry, we've got, going in the background, so many different things going on, so complicated. I've just got to put in little marks just to indicate where the main objects are, maybe there's a little boat there out in the uh, out in the uh, the water. Over on the left hand side, keep it really, really simple. Reflection of Little Harry. Apologies if there's anybody watching this called Little Harry, I do apologize. Um, now, a mast. 
Sometimes I do draw in masks, other times I don't, just leaving the, the drawing of the mask to the very end. So, um, yeah, just, uh, it does vary. Just finish up a little bit of details on that left hand side. I'm actually going to sneak in that that grayish boat that's on the left hand side below the the galleon. Um, I made it shorter just to sort of balance out things and not have it going right over that left hand edge. So it's just so it's a lot shorter, and we've got sort of then as a pattern we've got big boat on the right next boat in size down sort of on on the left or just to the left of the middle and then right on the left hand side there's that little grayish boat hopefully that will give a nice composition and the other thing about the drawing is trying to get the horizon right the horizon here is probably um the top quarter the top two-thirds so i'm actually giving myself more emphasis to work on that lower part um where we've got all these reflections and the everything that's going on in the foreground with the uh the harbor bed and the low tide and all the shingles and and uh um stones and so on so trying to think about that that level of the horizon is quite important in the in a, in a scene like this where you want to have a lot of a lot of emphasis on that foreground right now to the painting so my paper is taped down i'm using a, a soft sponge to wet the paper in that top third so that this will by wetting by wetting the paper first of all with watercolor it's going to give me a smoother wash as long as i don't use paint that's too that's going to granulate too much it's going to give me a smooth wash it's going to be a lot easier to lay down that smooth wash and a graded wash as well so a little bit darker at the top and lighter at the bottom and in my source photo, there's a little bit of a, a streak of cloud going diagonally down. I'm not sure if it's been made by a plane or it's an actual shadow, but I think that's quite attractive to have that, that, that sort of angular shadow, either top left to bottom right, or it could have been, actually it could have been top right to bottom left. That would have worked as well. I'm using a soft mop brush here. This is a Jackson's Squirrel Mop, size 14, I think. As I come down to the horizon, the wash is a bit weaker, so I've got more water to pigment ratio. As the paper was wetted, I've got a little bit longer to play around with things before before it, it all dries and you've basically reached the point of no con, no return. Um, timing is of the essence in watercolour. The paints I'm using are handmade quality paints from Chapman's Art Materials in the UK. They do ship worldwide. I have a chat with Mark at Chapman's Art Materials. Mark's a chemist by trade. He knows his stuff when he's creating these, these uh, wonderful paints. And yeah, I, I exclusively use these now. Now, just where that brush is now, an annoying hair <laughs> has materialized but to be honest with you i just leave these hairs if i can't if 
I can't extract it from the painting, I just tend tend to leave it till the very end. It might make some kind of curly shape, could make into something, a bird, a bit of rigging, who knows? So just leave it in there. Don't muck about it. Just don't don't worry about it. Um, and this Jackson's brush, it's quite old. I've had it for well, I think that brush I've had it for about four or five years now, and it's lost a lot of the middle hairs. And uh, one there, <laughs> you can see an example, but it doesn't matter uh, as long as I've got um, as long as I've got a brush I can work with. And it's I guess when you're losing the point, it's fast becoming a flat brush in a way. Right on the left hand side. Now, using the edge of that brush, this soft brush, I've created the base color of the water. So after the sky, I'm doing the water. And with the sea, with the water, I'm just thinking about painting around the main shape. So there's the Little boat on the left, little Harry. There's jaw dancer on the right. I don't know what the bluish boat is in the middle, right bang in the middle. Don't know, don't know what that one is, but just treating as a shape, um, simplify it. Just in my mind, I'm just trying to simplify as I go along. Up there in the distance is that marina. Uh, I've got it sort of in line with the top of jaw, jaw dancer, and start off at the at the top there. The colour of the water quite strong, and then as I come down to the water's edge go a little bit stronger. The paints, so the paints are marked, Jack, Mark, sorry, Jackman's Art Materials um, paints, and the colors I'm using the same as always, neutral tint at the top, then burnt umber, then burnt sienna, yellow ochre. I've got a spring green, viridian green, cobalt turquoise, Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, Amazon crimson, cadmium red, English oxide, a bit like a light red, cadmium orange, and cadmium yellow. Now for the underlying color of the foreground, which is very saturated water. My plan here is to get in this blue and it's a slightly deeper blue than the water beyond. And get in the lighter reflected areas of the two boats, these two main boats. And then when it's dry, I'm going to go in on top with the darker colors of the little stones and shingles and um, the ropes and that sort of thing. So this is just the base color going quite, going a lot darker here underneath the main boat, jaw, jaw dancer. And this will, of course, with watercolor, things do normally dry a little bit lighter. So I've got to try and go a little bit darker than I think to compensate. Quite a bit of ultramarine blue here, tiny bit of aloes and crimson to darken things up. And with my brush mark, my brush strokes here, they're a little bit more erratic than when I did the sky. The sky was more horizontal lines and a bit more controlled. 
here because of all the confusion of what's going on in that foreground. I can be um, just try, trying to use these, these brush marks just gives you some subtle variations in the strength of the color and the, the values and some lights and darks. That's the reflection there of the right hand boat, jaw dancer. And I've lifted off a little bit with that same brush. There's a tiny bit of a slope with my paper. It's on about 10 degrees angle, something like that. So the paint is where well, you can see there's a bit of a bead forming at the base there, which just helps moving when you're when you're working from top to bottom, it just helps the the flow of the painting process working down in that way. At the bottom here, I'm adding in some warmth. The the the, the water here is probably a little bit shallower and there's less of the reflection of the sky we can see more of the color of the bed so that's why i've gone in a little bit warmer down there the reflected areas of those two boats they're not going to be bright whites they are going to be a little bit darker than the white of the boat so I'm using a little bit of yellow ochre just tease it into that shape doesn't need to be exact really and likewise with the main boat it's got to be a sort of off-white color not the same brightness as I've got with the the sun coming from the right, not the same brightness as the as the actual hull itself. And I can use a synthetic brush here just to lift off a little bit of the paint where I've got that fender, for example. So I'm using a synthetic round brush. I've dampened the brush, squeezed out the water. So fingers crossed when I touch the paper, the damp surface is gonna it's gonna lift off some of that paint to give me that lighter value, almost showing the paper beneath. Now, as the sky is drying quite nicely, I can go back into the background and paint up to and over the sky just to start off with that background. With my squirrel mop brush again and just some base colors of the buildings i think they're not really bright whites they're just a sort of off-white color i've chosen it's a bit of a hodgepodge of different colors but in fact it's very similar to the the base color of the water below something warm and then over to the right of those buildings there's a more of a modern structure i'm sorry but i don't know what the building is i, I can only assume it's something to do with a harbor maybe it's something to do with the fishing harbor here or a visitor attraction but it's got a it's got a sort of circular conical tower and then a 
and then a, a flattish building below it, either side, left and right. And then to the right of that, there's the, the, the complicated scene of all those different masts and tops of boats going into the distance from, from these nearby boats. Really, really complicated. I'm using now a smaller synthetic brush. This is a size 8 synthetic brush from WH Smith in the UK. Um, who would think they produce fairly good brushes? But they're all right. And uh, I'm using one here, number 8, synthetic, a brown brush, I think it might be called. Might be part of their watercolor set. I've had to use this brush, maybe 30 years or so. Very rarely used it, but I think it's quite, a, I'm getting quite used to it now. And at this stage of the process, where I need to be a little bit more precise with my painting and painting around objects, but still having a brush that's got a good edge to it. So you can. Well, you probably can't see now, but it's almost like a little tiny flat brush. And just lightly touching that background to create the impression of something going on there. That, that top border and now the water's edge, just a little bit of darkness. Use my finger to move the paint around, lift off a little bit of paint, create some smoother edges. It's, it's got to be, it's got to be fairly soft, no hard edges up there in the distance. So that's why I'm using my finger. I, I could have used a, a brush or a little bit of tissue just to lift off things, but I sometimes find with my fingertips, I can be, it's just a little less severe than lifting off a lot of paint. And we can see that flat edge again. This little tiny boat. There on the right hand side and a slither of light hitting the right hand side. It's quite attractive there and it sort of, in a way it balances out the things on the left. If I didn't have something in there the position of where the main boat is, jaw, jaw dancer, um, it would be a little bit empty over there on the right hand side. So I think that balances it quite well over there. And I have moved from the source photo, I have moved it more into the left and not, it was way out. If I painted it where it was, it would be sort of on the right hand edge of the paper. No, I've, I've brought it in a little bit, a little bit more. Left hand side, harbour wall. And in a similar way to the background, I'm considering this almost as background. Keep it simple, just a few marks here and there, trying to create the illu illu illusion of something going on. In that background, just uh, beyond these main boats. And one of, one of the main things I see in the middle are these windows of the cabins. So just really square shapes or rectangular shapes in there, in that sort of white space. And that can create the illusion of Lots of little boats all mingling in with each other. In a way, it, it's very similar to if I was painting a car park with lots of cars very close together, painting in lots of windscreens can just give that impression of the, the actual car 
um, or in this case the boats. Bit of dark blue for this middle boat and painting around the left hand boat just to give that a bit of start to give it a bit of form. And the base of the boat is a sort of English oxide colour. I might need to strengthen, there's a little white line between the, the navy blue and the red. So I'll strengthen it up later on with a bit of white paint. That's the top of this left-hand boat. Rooftops on the left hand side. Not too precise. It's over there on the left hand side. I don't want to get too detailed, too accurate with the rooftops, but just, just to create the impression of something going on there. These sort of angular shapes of the of the rooftops. A bit darker than, of course, a little bit darker than the, the walls of the buildings and paint around some of the gable windows. Try and get a fairly neat edge at the very end. A few little chimneys as well. And then on the walls, a few architectural details just to create the impression of these buildings. Not every single window. Just a few here and there. Small and large shapes down to the ground floor and some shop fronts, generally darker, darker shapes down there. To the left of the this this modern building, this conical tower, it's a little bit darker in there. So I'll just paint that in. Tiny, it's a little bit lighter at the bottom of there, but it's a bit darker at the top. And the very top of the circular building has a darker shape to it on the left, and then a little bit of a a line to for the for the roof. And then going over to the right. here and there. This is where I would tend to look at my source subject for a little bit of inspiration over those main shapes or objects in the background and try not to think too much about what they are, but more about what I see, just observing and creating the shapes. And then hopefully it will give the impression, the, not the illusion, the impression of of that the, the background harbour. A few more little windows on the houses. There's a, a little bit of perspective to be aware of on that left hand side. The, the angle of the 
top rooftops and then the harbour the top of the harbour wall is almost horizontal that would be the eye line this is the top of a boat I'm simplifying that right hand side I'm not actually going for lots of boats on the left hand side I'll just keep with this main one I think it would just be a bit too I want I want the impression of lots of boats to be in the middle over on the left hand side if I put lots of boats on there or lots of different shapes it would just make it a little bit too confusing over there I want the balance to be the balance to be in the middle and between uh, little little Harry and Jaw Dancer. So keep it simple over there. Now just just a, a few a, a start here to some of the reflections from the harbour wall. And the the reflection of that darker shape between well that darker that darker thing that darker part of the building to the left of the the modern tower this cylindrical tower Back with my mop brush. And some details just just beyond little Harry. Now an important step with the main boat, jaw dancer, the left hand side of the cabin I'm going to have to try and simplify jaw dance so there's, there's lots of things going on there sonar equipment and all sorts of navigation stuff but just trying to Keep it simple, these two halves, the, the light on the right, the dark on the left. Now for the hull. Good edge, good edge with the bow of the boat. It's quite, it's actually quite dark on the left hand side. And almost vertical, but then as we go down to the bottom, just a little bit of a, a tiny curve. Making a start now on the the actual bed of this harbour and the surface is quite dry where I did that initial wash of the blue and the reflections of the boats. Now on top, as I said earlier, going in with thicker, darker colour and Again, looking at my source photo for a little bit of guidance as regards the shapes and the the sort of density of the these darker marks. Just below that boat, it's actually quite dark with maybe uh, perhaps the water is a little bit sh shallower there and there's more of the harbour harbour bed and the the material showing through. So 
So I'm using very warm colors for this. The almost um, all of those warm colors in the bottom left hand corner, allergen crimson, cadmium red, and ox uh, English oxide, a bit like the light red there. Pick up a bit of neutral tint at the top to go really dark. At the water's edge, this is, um, there, there are lots of horizontal marks. And in between those horizontal marks, tiny bit of light showing. Perhaps there's, I think it's mainly seaweed at the water's edge here. I guess that's it. It's quite sort of cl like clumps of seaweed and it's, it's accumulated on the water's edge. But as we come back towards us, then it becomes more of this stony material. And I've left a few little light marks just where, just where I painted there, just below that. There's a little white mark right on the right hand side, little, little white mark. Um, if I can try and leave those, that would be good because they could be the beginning of some sort of repeated repeated pattern of these little light shingles or stones catching the light rather than having to revert to a bit of white paint which I try to avoid it's sometimes necessary to use a bit of white paint to bring in those highlights which weren't possible with with painting around objects or using masking fluid or something like that. So I've got those little light bits of paper and from the initial wash and I'm trying to be conscious not to go over, go over them, try and protect them a little bit because they, they could be, they could come in handy when uh, we come to the final stages and Having a having a little sort of few little sparkles and little high, little highlights here and there. I'm cutting across over over the reflection as as I can see in my my source subject. utilizing the the edge of the brush as well almost like a little tiny soft flat brush underneath the main boat up to the that little fin which is catching the light In fact, I can probably do most of this harbour bed with the same flat brush. Uh, and now on the left hand side, I think over there some dry brush marks would be a lot better to try and create the impression of the, the smaller shingles. It's a little bit further away and there's not much water on the brush here. Dry brush marks going up to up to those boats. The, the angle is important here as well. That suggestion of the line of these stones from just a slight incline from bottom left to top right and as I'm going over this area try to alter the intensity of the value going a little bit darker there it's a good bit darker and a lot darker going up to little Harry a 
and the shadow and the shadow going over little Harry. The painting at this stage, to be honest with you, it's still looking a little bit like a complete mess, but things do, I find they do gradually get a little bit better. Hopefully as good as we can get. But at this stage, as I say, it's <laughs> a lot of people might, might give up. I, I could give up at this stage, but you just got to keep, just got to keep going and something will become of it. I'm using my fingertips again, just to smooth out some of the edges, get a bit of softness, blend in a few colors a little bit more. That's not, it's not really possible with using a brush compared to your fingertip. If you're not worried about all that paint on your fingers, it's a good, good tool to use. Connecting now the harbour bed with main boat, which is always a good idea to connect these different objects together so that they're not too, they don't stand out, they don't stand out too much. They, everything needs to be connected in some way, even if it's something light against something dark, we need to put them close together and connect them. And that shadow, the the dark line of the water's edge, that's very important to try and connect all of those elements together, starting from the, the left hand boat, then up to Little Harry, and then over to Jaw Dancer, connect them all together. This left hand boat, don't know what the name of the boat is, quite a small boat. I'm, I've gone with a, a lavender color, a little bit of, little bit of brown, just to create that sort of, it's almost like a, a sort of battleship gray, that sort of a, um, a warm, it's, to me it's like a warmish gray. And then at the base of the boat, a bit of neutral tint, dark shadows, as it's, as it's uh, bending over. Now, don't want to go too dark, so I will lift lift off the paint a little bit with my fingers. Try and connect the grey boat with little Harry. Little Harry has got a little dark shadow down the left hand side now. Cobalt, uh, sorry, cerulean blue. Cerulean blue and the bottom of Little Harry. Neutral tint, alloys and crimson. bottom of the boat where it's where it's meeting with the harbour bed bit of darkness under the stern of the boat and while, while I've got this small brush I can just start to add in a few little darker details, darker marks on the harbour bed, little tiny stones and and um, objects there. 
Of course, I could use a little bit of splattering as well with that small brush. Just tapping the brush against my finger or tap my finger against the brush. Now, with splattering, you have to be a bit careful because paint can go all over the place. And when I do it, it invariably does. So maybe consider placing a bit of paper over the part of your painting that you don't want to have any splattering marks, as long as it's dry, of course. But just lay a little bit of paper on top and that will just preserve it a, a tiny bit. Slightly darker line, darker edge to the bottom of the hull and around that little fin shadow on the two fenders just to create them dark on the left but a little bit lighter on the right where it's catching the light The, the bottom of those fenders are a little bit darker as indeed there's a tiny little bit of darkness on the top of the fenders as well. Some sort of red object on top of the boat and then sometimes when I've got this red I just add in a few little dabs here and there especially in a harbour scene where you've got lots of little things that might be red like um, life buoys and um, bits of equipment on the on the boat or fenders or buoys you, you can often see little little bits of red here and there so I just repeat that through the painting in fairly random areas Dark edge to the fin. And then over on the left hand side as well. In this central area between the two boats, I need to put in a little bit more of the shingle and stones and grit. Just exposing a, a few little bits of lighter areas that's reflecting the sky, little bits of blue. There will be quite a bit of this. The, the foreground is almost, well, just above half of the overall area of the painting. So it's going to need a little bit of additional effort to put in some details in there and that will be lots of these little dabs of paint, maybe a few dry brush marks as well. The silhouetted shape of the fender on the left hand side of course, a lot darker than the ones on the right. 
and vendors always do make a boat scene a little bit more believable when you put in these little details like the fenders and lines across the top of the boat rigging can <laughs> rigging can help as well ropes masts of course so this line running across the top of the hull generally a a warmer mark there's not a lot of paint on my brush now so it's almost a dry brush mark and i'm having to be very careful with the angle of that line it, it just it slopes down and then it just suddenly curves around the back of the boat where you where of course you don't see it and above that just a few more details on the cabin of the boat the shadow of this fender it's it's got a little bit of a, a curve to it i'm using my round synthetic brush but flattened it out a bit so that i've got that edge and just replicate that with the second one while i've got this edge i can be creating some very fine lines Back to the harbour bed, just a few little bits and pieces down there. I'll, I'll be I'll be constantly going back there to add in extra extra things. Now, little Harry needs a line across the top of the bow. Just makes it suddenly more boat-like doing something like that. Um, few well a couple of little windows for little harry and a few more bits and pieces on the top dark shape there there's actually a boat beyond little harry up against the harbour wall, so I've just sort of given the impression of that. Um, a darker line along the base of the harbour wall, a few darker marks on the rooftops as well. Not too many, I don't want to overdo it on the left hand side or those background buildings. few little marks, a few more marks on the harbour bed. And some marks to emphasise the, the uh, curve of the little grey boat on the left. There's a very th thinner, there's a, a lot, th there's a much thinner line just below the thicker line on little Harry. few extra tiny marks on the, the shadow just going up the side of the boat.
neutral tint, go a little bit darker. And with the lines at the side, I go over the masking tape so that when I peel off the masking tape, there's a nice, of course, there's going to be a nice crisp edge to that and that white border. Few dry brush marks. Generally trying to give the feeling of the gradient of uh, this harbour bed and it's where I'm standing is of course slightly higher than, than the distance so it just sort of slopes down a, a little bit. On these middle boats, middle ground boats, just a few little bits and pieces on the tops of the cabins. Must, of course, to start to get in some of the verticals into the picture, all of these masts and the way, and I could have drawn a nice straight pencil line and then follow it, but I prefer to do a line if I can do a continuous line, I will do, but if it's too, if the distance is too great, I might just split it up as I've done there and a little gap between maybe where the light is catching that, that little bit of the mast. I could use a rigger brush for this stage, but the soft round brush I've got has got it's got a quite a good point to it. Just repeat these verticals across the scene. Neutral tint, burnt umber, and now a rope going, it's almost 45 degrees, going from the, from the top of the boat to the bottom right corner of the picture. I get a little bit of white paint on top of that just to emphasize it a bit and a mast for that boat there, just a few faint lines for masts in the distance. I think these vertical marks, they always give, they always help the impression of a harbour scene. Even, even where you can't see any boats, just have that, just have these random vertical marks not equally spaced, not all the same size, and it just creates the impression of lots of little boats um, all together. This fin here needs to be just not not completely white. It's like a sort of rusty 
rusty colours. So I've picked up a tiny bit of red to create that. At this stage, I'm just adding in a few more finer, de final, final, finer details, especially in this foreground where there's lots of little dots and blobs of of paint, and so I'm adding not not every single blob but just the impression of this manic um, array of different stones and colours of stones. To strengthen that, vertical line down from the bow of that boat, just that I got, uh, it's, quite, it's quite a strong vertical that going down, which always helps a painting having a strong vertical or may, or, and or maybe a strong horizontal as well. To strengthen up that top of that bottom, of the bow, a few little dry brush marks here. There's not a lot of water on my brush at this stage. Cover up a few lighter areas where I think there might, might be just a little bit too many. Cover those up. And what I need to do next is add in a few extra lighter highlights, which I use a thin rigger brush for. I use a, a Lebenson brush, which has synthetic hairs, but it's got a very fine line to it. And it's great for doing rigging, masts, wires, even foliage and, and twigs and branches. Brilliant brush for doing all of that. The white paint I use is a gouache a white gouache paint from Windsor. This one's from Windsor and Newton. So rigger brush, or in this case, this Lebenson synthetic brush. I've dampened the brush a little bit, just tease out a little tiny bit of the paint. And uh, sorry for obscuring what I'm doing, but just a few highlights of the with this white paint, pick up on some light hitting the rigging, maybe some masts, horizontal things, vertical things. And also I can put a few little dabs of white paint in on the harbour bed as well. Do that in a minute. Continue along that, that background. So with these masks, they're not all one colour. There's some that are dark, some that are light. Strengthen that line between the, the blue and the red of that very middle boat.
between between little Harry and that blue coat, there's a few vertical white marks. Not sure what they are, whether it's railings maybe or a bit of rope coming down from the background boat. And that little hair right in the middle of the page, that little hair that I left and it made that mark, perhaps it could be a little bit of a little streamer or a little thin flag flying in the wind off one of those masts. I, I think it's hardly, if I look at it, I, I think it's hardly noticeable. Bottom right corner, strengthen up that rope with a bit of highlight on it and also on these vertical masks, just a few of them on the right hand, of course, on the right hand side. Think about the reflection as well. Continue that mark on there. A few little white speckles of paint here and there. Continue the theme. Not all equally spaced and trying to be as trying to be as random as possible. That's why splattering is quite good when you get that a random pattern of a blobs appearing and different different sizes of blobs. With a bit of bit of practice, um, splattering can be really good. I'm, I prefer the more here the more uh, manual approach of uh, just deciding where each of these blobs will be. Have a little bit of a cable going up to, I guess it would be Little Harry. Little Harry needs to be secured. There's a, a few extra vertical marks around that mast. A bit difficult to tell whether it's rigging or actual mast behind. Some extra little white marks on those buildings at the background as well. So that's it. And as I normally do, right at the end, a little bit of a self-critique. Always important thing to do. If, if you don't have anybody else to uh, take a look at the painting and give their two cents of a bit of feedback for you. Um, but... but uh, me straight away looking at the painting thinking what went well what didn't go so well reminding first of all of the source photo Brixham Harbour in the UK very pretty harbour it's sort of I think it's a working harbour uh, still but very popular tourist destination lovely part of the world and low tide number of different craft here the big thing about this demo is simplification, taking a complex scene, particularly all of this. If you went in there, there, for example, that's a nightmare. <laughs> what on earth would you do with all that? But it's only when you stand back or you squint your eyes or you have a smaller image that's, that's the thing to do with, with some, some of these complex scenes. 
have a thumbnail. Look at a thumbnail of that image, even if it's, even if it's sort of a few centimeters square or one inch by one inch, just really, really tiny. That can sometimes be a lot better than looking at, for me anyway, a lot better than looking at a, a high resolution, big, big format picture. So quite a few things I removed and then other objects I moved around. I moved this gray boat into, into the right. That little boat there lurking on the right, I moved that into close to jaw, jaw dancer. Hopefully I pronounced it right all the way through this uh, through this video. And little little Harry. Well, oh, there's another name there. Can't quite. Me, Minu, Miru. Not sure. Anyway, right. Uh, so that's the source photo. Let's have a look at my end painting then. Overall, I think I'm fairly pleased with the results. I believe I've captured the essence of the scene these boats the complexity of that middle ground there which the way i did it me being fairly loose uh just shapes really blobs and shapes um, and lines at the end but concentrating on these two main boats the the bigger boat on the right and the slightly small on the left and there were some other supporting characters the gray one here that blue one blue and red one in the middle there and that that one on the right hand side i think that one turned out all right quite like the reflection on that one looks fairly looks fairly realistic and apart from the complication of the top half of the scene the bottom half of the scene is the bed of the harbor and all of this rubble and stones and shells and seaweed strewn across the the harbor bed but there's a little there's a little sort of thin layer of water there and we've we've got the the sky reflected we've got those boats reflected and really um, that bottom half was done in two phases with that initial wash, laying down the sky, getting in the soft edges of the reflections and the color reflections, thinking that the reflection, the reflection is going to be darker than the object it's reflecting. All right, a little bit darker than the hull. And after that, with a brush, dry brush marks, not too much water on my brush. And I, I did take a, a fair bit of time in creating all these marks, dry brush marks, blobs and dashes and spots of paint and a little bit of, a little bit of splattering there as well for good measure. And finally a bit of white paint just to tie it all together. Left hand, oops, left hand side, left hand side town buildings well the more you zoom in it doesn't look so good but it might look a little bit better when it's taken as a whole with the whole picture um, hopefully it looks a little bit more like buildings there on the left hand side but we don't want we don't want the viewer to to look over here we want them to get the impression of this bright day and nice sunlight and blue sky and these these lovely boats in the harbour. Hope you liked it then, and I'll catch up with you on the next video. Bye-bye.